So I'm finally making um, the vitamin D video. I should have done this a long, 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 long time ago. Um, guys, there's a lot of really unsettling information surrounding vitamin D, the number of people who are deficient in vitamin D and who don't even know that they are. So when you go to the store, you're not gonna just gonna see like vitamin D. It's like, it's the proper name for it. Like when you're getting the supplement, it's gonna be vitamin D3. So if you hear me going interchangeably between vitamin D3 and vitamin D, um, obviously vitamin D, um, we naturally can make it. We can naturally get it from the sun and some of the foods that we eat. Um, but vitamin D3, obviously it's, you know, it's created and um, you know, that's the supplement. So yeah, the stuff regarding vitamin D is just, I mean, it's sad that more people are not talking about it. Um, there's a lot of stuff that even links the deficiency back. And now mind you, for the US alone, there's 41% of people in the US who are deficient, 41%. And those are the people who have had their blood work done to be tested for it. So if there's already 41 who've actually had the blood work done, that we're told that they're deficient, we could assume that there are way more who have no idea that they're not getting enough vitamin D. This does matter in the age that we're living in with the virus, 100% there is a correlation to those people who are hospital bound, regardless of their age, regardless of their ethnicity, like you know what part of the world they're from, um, there is a correlation that they also have very low levels of vitamin D. Like this is, this is so common. I don't think people know just how common it is for us to not get enough vitamin D. Um, so vitamin D basically is just, it's necessary for the absorption of calcium for bone health. So without it, basically we lose our bone density. Obviously you guys can see how this can go back to like osteoporosis and other, um, you know, bone diseases and issues when we get older, but also there's a lot more that happens like right now at the age that we are right now, like regardless of us aging. And so with, when you lose like bone density, first off, if you are a vain person, okay, and you're worried about your looks, um, when we lose our bone density, which naturally happens, which is why, you know, we have all these little old people, cause you know, the older they get, they start to get shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter, you know, by every year, you know, we're losing, you know, bone density. And so basically this ages up our, um, our aging process. This, this ages, this uh, speeds up our aging process. And um, I remember uh, doing a little deep dive, okay? Cause this was like, this was like a 3 a.m. deep dive. And I was wondering why do people of color age so much more gracefully than white people? Like why? Because we all know um, how people say, oh, Asians age beautifully. They age gracefully. Or black doesn't crack. We've all heard that. Um, so there definitely are certain races who age better than others. <laughs> and uh, I was just wondering, okay, what, what is it? Because at first I was like, um, I went with what I've heard my whole life that, well, people in Asia, they live longer and they age better because of their food and just their diet is so much more healthy than ours. And I'm just like, I don't know about that. Like now that I'm an adult, I'm like, they have some junk food just like we do, right? So what is the real answer? And I don't think it's necessarily um, food because let's look at, um, any person of color in the US. So the US is not known for having the healthiest diet. In fact, if you're coming from a different country into the US, be ready for your first month or two to start putting on some weight. By the time you leave here, you're gonna be a little thicker. <laughs> like, it's just gonna happen. Like, our food is just, it's not the healthiest. So, I was just, so you can't say that, um, you know, black doesn't crack, especially for Americans because we have some of like, and it's, you can't say that it's because of what we're eating because especially if you're in the South, like we're eating some, I mean, our soul food is not healthy, okay? It can give you high blood pressure, up your cholesterol. I mean, it's just, it's not healthy. So we know it's not about food. And we also can't say black doesn't crack because of melanin, because think about it, okay? Asians are some of the whitest people on earth. Okay, they're not cracking and they have no melanin. <laughs> like, okay, so what is the answer? And basically, um, they they were doing um, like a series of studies and basically black people in general, we have denser bones. So we have more bone mass and um, basically the more bone mass you have, um, if you think about people, when you, 
when you look at aging, if you look at slides 10 years apart, you'll notice people start losing volume. So by their eyes, they lose volume. That's where you get those little wrinkles around the eyes. They use volume around here, some of the fat, <laughs> that the buccal fat. <laughs> um, you know, so if you have already a very, very fat face and there's fat that you can go ahead and like you can afford to lose, it's great. But some people, don't have enough fat to afford to lose and that's why so many surgeons don't want to do buccal fat removals because it's just like um you're gonna need that fat padding because you're gonna lose bone mass and so that's why people start getting the lines right here everything kind of sinks in it's because they're losing bone mass and you're losing it around the clock um so basically vitamin d strengthens our bones and our teeth okay so you're gonna have less teeth getting chipped falling out whatnot and basically it's because vitamin D allows us to absorb calcium, which we're getting from other food or even other supplements. So like both of these work hand in hand. You need both. So to absorb calcium, you still need vitamin D. You need vitamin D to absorb calcium. Um, it's very, very, very important. So, you know, the thing growing up, everyone's like, oh, drink more milk, drink more milk. I don't necessarily think milk is the best form of calcium. Half of that was just advertising. And for a lot of people, the hormones in milk can mess you up more than the vitamin d deficiency so going on yes it does accelerate aging people who are not getting enough vitamin d 41 percent of the u.s population are deficient in it okay and these are the people who know that they are there are a lot of people who have no idea that they are um basically when you're vitamin d deficiency you can have high blood pressure um it's pretty funny so children who live closer to the equator not only do they not have as much um, they're not being brought in basically to the doctor for things like high blood pressure but also they have less allergies they have no peanut allergies so like there's a link to vitamin d getting enough and people who are not getting enough and them having more allergies and issues with their blood pressure but um the interesting thing is that so vitamin d not only regulates our immune system because it can definitely make you get sick less often but it also regulates our insulin and our cardiovascular health so out of immune system and cardiovascular health people who are lacking in both of those areas are the ones who are in the hospitals right now with you know, COVID. And so, I mean, you can, I can't say that one caused the other, but it's like, if you look, the majority of these people are deficient in vitamin D. And there are a lot of virologists right now who are like, you really need to be taking vitamin D. Like, cause everyone's jumping on, oh, take vitamin C to help you not get sick. It's like, no, you need to be taking vitamin D and vitamin C along with zinc. Like, you know, it's, that's like the trifecta, but they're just like, there's so much we could be doing now and no one's talking about what you can do, especially before we had the vaccine. No one was talking about things that you can start doing to help protect yourself other than just stay away from people. And it's like, that's not necessarily the best option. I don't even think it's that realistic. Um, there's still people who were away from people the entire time and they still got it. Um, but I just think it's, it's really interesting. And oh my gosh, vitamin D and um, gosh, uh, pregnant people. Okay, pregnant people, <laughs> pregnant women. Um, it's uh, definitely one of the biggest vitamins that are in um, the prenatal pill because there is a huge link. And I know so many women who had preeclampsia. There is a huge link between not getting enough vitamin D and getting preeclampsia. Also, vitamin D3 in pregnant women was also linked to them getting like bacterial vaginosis. So the women who were deficient, they were coming in with more issues with, you know, bacterial infections down there. And obviously they were more likely to get preeclampsia, which preeclampsia is very common. So it's just, oh my gosh, it's just does it's just related to so much. So if you're wondering about what vitamin D is, it's basically a fat soluble pro hormone, which is just a fancy way of saying it's a precursor to a hormone. So some people would be like, oh, vitamin D is a hormone. I mean, technically it's a precursor to a hormone. Um, and you can find it in fish, dairy, uh, fortified foods. Fortified foods just mean like when you get your cereal and it says fortified with all of these vitamins, basically they're just adding it to regular food, like any food. So yeah, you can get it from fortified food, um, fatty fish, dairy, and sunshine, but getting it from the sun is not the best way to get it because like we said, um, there's tons of people who not only can, you know, accelerate your aging, like trust me, you can tell the people who have been in the sun too much <laughs> versus those who haven't. 
and also you have a high risk of getting a skin cancer which I cannot tell you how many people I know who are getting different moles removed or having patches of skin taken out because they've got some type of skin cancer like it's very very common um, you can say oh well people of color their melanin will protect them and it's like well yes having darker skin will protect you but there are still people who from the sun i mean but there are still people who get skin cancers who have dark skin as well um yeah the, the sun definitely is not the best way to get your vitamin d so there have also been tons of studies on vitamin d and acne there's this huge thing with people with cystic acne they've also been shown to have low levels of vitamin d but the, like we know most of our population has low levels of vitamin d vitamin d the cool thing about it is also has like antimicrobial properties so basically if you have bacteria related acne this could clear up some of those zits and pimples um so when it comes to like what causes the vitamin d deficiencies um dark skin is one so the majority of people who are deficient in it are people of color um and basically dark skin and sunscreen because both does not allow your skin to absorb enough sunlight which if you're not absorbing the sunlight you're not getting the vitamin d obviously if your diet is a little off you're not going to be getting the vitamin d through you know if you're not eating like fatty fish um or foods that are fortified with it then and even those aren't like the best way to get all of your vitamin d like some people who are eating healthy balanced diets they still have to supplement so it's really interesting like people who live in northern latitudes or who are like homebound like let's say they're really sick or they're staying home all the time um they make up like the largest majority in the world of people who have vitamin d deficiencies obviously we know even if you're not living in a northern latitude even just you know down in the u.s like you can still have a vitamin d deficiency but it's like those people as far as like when we're talking about the whole world they have the largest numbers of people who are vitamin d deficient um there were even some studies done um, when it came to the virus and things like that they were looking at a lot of people who came from let's say africa and i think they did some studies in norway and they were more likely to be hospitalized because of covid because and they noticed also that they had very low um, vitamin d and also they were people of color so it's just it's very interesting to me how this all links back like there's there's so many reasons why you should be taking vitamin d and i'm not even done i'm not even done <laughs> so some of the symptoms of vitamin d um are just uh fatigue um, getting sick a lot so getting lots of little colds or blown out flus or even just infections like having a cut having that get infected or ear infections whatnot um, bone and back pain um, having your mood just kind of be off um, people <laughs> sometimes people who don't see get a lot of sun or just vitamin d in general sometimes they will have like you know mood swings or just bouts of depression um impaired wound healing I, I take that back to like infection like getting a cut having it infected or maybe just seeing something like you have a wound and it's just like taking forever to heal also hair loss excessive hair shedding um and muscle pain so basically if this goes on for a long time let's say you're deficient in vitamin d for years which most people are deficient because they don't even know that they're deficient like half of these symptoms aren't even necessarily like you could say oh well i have back pain just because i have back pain maybe i slept wrong last night or my hair is just shedding crazy i don't know why it's shedding crazy a lot of people have issues with their hair over shedding um or oh i'm tired a lot of people are always tired like a lot of or oh i'm always getting like a cold or i'm always having like a runny nose maybe it's just my allergies again vitamin d deficiency and people who have more allergies like those are connected too so half of these symptoms like most of us have these symptoms <laughs> this is the scary part about it so if you are deficient in vitamin c d for a long period of time basically it can result in cardiovascular issues autoimmune diseases neurological diseases um, infections pregnancy complications and then certain cancers especially breast and prostate and colon cancers which those are the top three cancers that are like wiping people out obviously you can get a vitamin d3 supplement you can get this anywhere um basically it's just like four dollars and you get all of these soft gels um 
I take 5,000 IU a day. There are some doctors and things who are say, saying start at 5,000 IUs or go like 6,000 or something like that. Um, they say don't go over 10,000 IUs because then you can you can definitely get too much vitamin D and then obviously you can get complications from that. So it's not like with vitamin C where you can take as much as you want and there are no negative side effects. Taking too much vitamin D can be very bad too. Um, so yeah, you can get a supplement or you can eat fatty fish. Fatty fish is just like salmon, mackerel, and tuna. Um, you can eat egg, but it has to be the egg with the yolk. You can get it from cheese or fortified milk, fortified cereals and juices. Obviously, if you have acne and you're trying to stay away from the hormones that are in cheese or the hormones that are in dairy, then we could see how eating cheese or drinking milk could kind of screw that up for you. Um, and then you can get it in beef liver, which I don't know anyone who eats beef liver, but you can get it from beef liver, um, or you can get vitamin D from like mushrooms. So those are your options. <laughs> the easiest of course is just taking the supplement. Here's the catch. If you're taking vitamin D supplement, you need to take it with food. Remember, it is a fat soluble um, compound. So you have to take it with food if you really want to absorb most of it or the majority of it is just gonna go out with your pee. So please keep that in mind. Take it with food, um, take it after you've eaten or something like that. Um, you, yeah, that's you're gonna get the most out of your vitamin D. But now that this video is very long, I hope most of you listen to this because like vitamin D affects a lot more than what we know. And even people who had like cystic acne just by upping their vitamin D intake really helped with clearing their skin. Um, especially if you have like the red angry acne, it helps with like inflammation and things like that. So trust me, there's a million reasons why you should be taking vitamin D, especially if you are staying out of the sun like I am, or even if you're not just staying out of the sun, even if you just have dark skin and you are in the sun, still, we're with the melanin we have we're not getting enough vitamin d anyways because of our skin so yeah just keep this in mind